continue with this passage. Second Timothy chapter 3. It says in verse number 4, Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. You know, this is the people who don't have time for church because they're too busy out having a good time. They're out playing and they're going to the lake and they're going out. And look, I love going to the lake, but you know what? I'm not going to go to the lake when I ought to be in church. Because I don't love pleasure more than I love God. And the Bible says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. You see, there are all kinds of churches around Sacramento and across our nation. They have a form of godliness. They have a form of Christianity. They have a form of biblical teaching. But they deny the power thereof. You know what the power thereof means? It means the authority thereof. It means the might and the strength behind it. You see, there are churches out there that claim to be a Christian church, but they'll even deny the miracles of the Bible. They'll say that the children of Israel didn't really part the red cross on the Red Sea after Moses parted it through the power of God. They'll say that it was just a land bridge, or it was the wind that did it, or it was just some kind of a reed sea instead of the Red Sea. They'll claim that Jesus was not born of a virgin. They'll claim that Jesus didn't walk on water. And they teach a social gospel and they have a fake Christianity. I'm talking about the United Methodists tonight. Let's call it what is the United Methodists. They'll sit there and deny the virgin birth, deny the bodily resurrection of Christ. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of God. They don't believe in the miracles of the Bible. Not only that, but they deny the power of God's word. They believe that their views and their understanding trump God's word. No, God's word has the power. God's word has the authority. God's word is what we ought to go to, not to whatever's popular or whatever the opinion of the month is that the media is cramming down our throat. Amen. So what we see in this passage, if we were to take the whole thing in aggregate, and obviously we don't have time to talk about each point on the list, is that in the last days, when he lists all these sins, he's saying the last days are going to be very sinful days. If we were to just sum it up in one sentence, we'd say in the last days, perilous times will come because sin will abound. There's going to be a very simple... And what, what do we see? We see our country is more sinful than it was 10 years ago. It's m more sinful than it was 30 years ago. We can see clearly that the morality in our country is going down. And it was going down like this, but in the last three, four years, it seems like it's just on a bobsled to hell. That's what we see today. Now, if you would, turn to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter number 17. Luke chapter 17, we're talking about the signs of the times. Jesus Christ said that his second coming would not catch us unawares. It would not come upon us as a thief in the night because we can look around and see these things begin to come to pass. We see a world government forming, the United Nations. We see the United States relinquishing its sovereignty to this world body. The last time the United States declared war on anyone was when they declared war on the country of Hungary in World War II. Ever since then, we're just enforcing United Nations resolutions. The last declaration of war from the Congress of the United States was World War II. But have we fought war since then? With no declaration of war, because we're going under the authority of the United Nations. We are seeing a world government forming. That's a sign of the times. When we see the stage being set for, as the Bible says, all nations, all tongues, all kindreds, and all people to look to one leader, the Antichrist. To worship one man, the Antichrist. That's why we see all of the religions coming together. We see the Catholics and the Protestants coming together and saying that the Protestant Reformation was just a big misunderstanding. <laughs> it's just a big mix-up. I mean, finally, we can clear it up 400 years later. What are we thinking? We all believe the same things. That's what they're saying today in the news. We see today that Eastern mysticism is even coming into the church. And we see that the Buddhists and the Hindus and the coexist mentality where all religions come together. We can see the New Age movement today rolling out 
and becoming mainstream doctrine in the United States of America. Universalism, universalist religion that says, well, Christianity is a way. Jesus said, I am the way. And they say, oh, well, you know, that's a way, but Islam has a way, and Hinduism has a way, and they're following the light that they have, and we're following the light. No, 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 there's only one light, and it's Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to be saved. It's the only way to heaven. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, His death, His burial, and His resurrection. And at the second coming of Christ, the Bible says in Luke chapter 16, verse 26, and as it was in the days of Noah... So shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed at the second coming of Christ. The Bible teaches that in the days leading up to that, it will be like it was in the days of Noah, and it will be like it was in the days of Lot. This passage in Luke 17 contains the famous scriptures about the rapture where it talks about two being in the field, one taken and the other left, two women grinding at the mill, one taken the other left. That passage about the rapture in context is compared to the days of Noah when the flood came and destroyed them all and the days of Lot when fire and brimstone rained down from heaven and destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. This is referring to the fact that the day that the rapture takes place, it will rain fire and brimstone upon the earth, according to the Bible, which of course takes place after the tribulation, but before God's wrath is poured out. And all God's people said, Amen. Whoa, no pre-trippers here tonight, huh? If so, don't say anything. But anyway, <laughs> somebody will be glad to explain it to you after the service. But in Luke 17... He compares it to the days of Lot for a reason. It's funny, when I was growing up, my dad, my dad's here tonight, he used to always say, I don't think the end is yet, he said, because it's not like it was in Sodom yet. And I remember thinking to myself, I don't think he's right about that. Because I read the story of Sodom, and I said, it's never going to be like that. So I thought, he's misinterpreting that. But you know what, Dad, you were right. Because you know what? It's starting to look like the days of Lot out there. I mean, I got off the airplane in, San, uh, in Sacramento. I thought, yeah, it, it, it seemed like San Francisco. I got off the airplane in Sacramento, California this morning, and it was two minutes before I saw a dude walking through the airport with a skirt on. I mean, we're living in days that are getting to be like it was in the days of Lot. And you know what I think is so funny is when people attack us, Bible-believing preachers, and they say, Oh, why do you preach about homosexuality so much? Why do you keep bringing that up? Why are you still fixated on that? Why are you bringing it up? Hey, because it's being crammed out our throat every stupid day. It's not a day goes by that the TV and the magazines and the newspapers aren't cramming this trash down our throat. And you know what? We didn't pick this fight. The fight came to us. And you know what? I didn't write this book. And this book already predicted thousands of years ago that that's what would be happening. I mean, I didn't choose that, hey, in the end times, before the second coming of Christ, we're going to have to be ripping face about a bunch of perverts and homos, and that's going to be the big issue in America that everybody talks about every single day in America. Hey, I didn't choose that. I didn't even predict that. I thought my dad was wrong about that, okay? I didn't choose this fight. This fight has come to us. And you know what I say? Bring it on! Hey, look, whatever fight the devil wants to bring me, bring it on. Because I'll preach any part of the Bible, and I'm not ashamed of any of it. I like, I like all of it. But we didn't choose this, well, why do you make that your battle? I didn't make that my battle. 
I preach 156 sermons a year. I preach every book of the Bible. I preach out of Genesis. I preach out of Exodus. I preach out of Leviticus. I preach out of Numbers. I preach out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I preach on the gospel. I preach on heaven. I preach on hell. I preach on the deity of Christ. I preach on the Trinity. I preach on salvation by faith. I preach on the eternal security of the believer. I'm preaching on repentance. I'm preaching on this. I preach on that. And then you preach on sodomy and all the cameras show up. I didn't choose that. They chose it because it fits their agenda. But you know what? They don't realize. They, they come in here because it fits their agenda, their little narrative, their brainwashing campaign that they're a part of, whether they know it or not or believe it or not. You know why they're here? They're here because their bosses want them here. And they're here to demonize Christianity. They're here to demonize God's people. But you know what? You can't even make us look. Take us. Take me out of context all you want. Because you know what? The stuff I say from the Bible is so true. Even out of context, it's still, I still like it. I still like it. I mean, even the TV pieces where they attack me. And can you please? Look, I'm watching all your guys' coverage of Pastor Jimenez. I got popcorn. And I'm thinking, man. He looks good on there. Yeah! Tell him! I like all of it. I like it all. And you know what? But these people in the media, they're so deluded. They think like, oh man, when we put this on TV, man, everybody's going to hate Pastor Jimenez. You know what they don't realize, Brother Jimenez, is that half the people in Sacramento are sitting at home, and they're seeing you on TV, and they're saying, hey, there's a guy with some guns. There's a guy who's finally telling it like it is. Amen. There's a guy that actually believes the Bible. And you know what? They just don't have the guts to say it. And they're, but they're sitting there at home in the comfort of their home saying it's about time somebody told it like it is that's what they're saying so all the media is doing is just helping get the word of God out and you know what the apostle Paul talked about how some people were spreading the word of God for the wrong motives you know he said they preach Christ even of envy and strife they preach it of contention trying to add affliction to our bonds you know trying to add persecution to us but you know what Hey, I just rejoice that people are hearing about Verity Baptist Church. Great! Because then they're going to tune in, and they're going to get the gospel. They're going to get the soul winning. They're going to get everything else he preaches 95% of the time when he's not talking about perverts, all the other good stuff from the Bible. They're going to tune in, and then, you know, some of these cowards, once they see him go through the storm, once they see him stand tall, see, a lot of people are sitting at home right now just wanting to see how it's all going to turn out. They want, look, nobody wants to get on board with a loser, with a quitter. Now, I know you're not a loser. I know you're not a quitter, but they're sitting back and they're watching. And let me tell you something. He's going to be like a rock because he's founded on the rock. And I'm going to tell you something. When the battle's over, when the dust settles, and when the media's moved on to their next faggot-promoting story that they want to write, their next wicked, godless story to promote the downfall of morality in America. And when they go back to printing more smut and crap in their stupid newspaper and their stupid TV show and television, you know what? He's going to still be standing, and this church will just grow and grow and grow. And you know what? I already know. Hey, I've already been doing it. I, hey, I went through this in Phoenix, Arizona seven years ago, and you know what? Our church is bursting at the seams. We just can't knock out the walls fast enough to expand our auditorium because you know what? People want to do. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12, go to Daniel chapter 12. We're going to look at some things from Daniel. Let's go back to the Old Testament. Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter number 12. We're going to look at some things from Daniel chapter 12 and Daniel 11. These are two scriptures that have to do with the end times, that have to do with...